Hello lovers of chemistry, it's Chemigator, welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I'm gonna focus on the chemistry of alanes and explore what happens when we bend this linear functional group to create cyclic alanes. Let's start by reviewing some basic structural features of linear alanes. In an alane, the central carbon atom is sp hybridized and forms double bond with each of its two adjacent carbon atoms which are sp2 hybridized. The key point here is that two double bonds are perpendicular to each other, so they don't interact with one another. From an orbital perspective, the p orbitals that form the double bond via side-by-side -side interaction are also perpendicular to each other. This geometry directly affects the positions of substituents. If you look along the axis of the central carbon atom, you will see that the two pairs of substituents at each end are also perpendicular to each other. One of the interesting consequences of this unique arrangement is the existence of axial chirality in alanes. Even though there is no traditional chiral center, like we usually see in organic molecules, this structure can be chiral depending on the pattern of substituents. Another important result of this unique arrangement of pi bound is reflected in the addition type reaction. For example, what's the major product when this alanine reacts with hydrogen bromide? Actually, there are two possible products. To figure out which one is major, we need to take a closer look at the transition states. From introductory to organic chemistry, you might remember that in acidic conditions, pi bonds react to form the most stable carbocation intermediate. Then, the nucleophile, in this case, bromide ion, adds to the carbocation center. So, which carbocation is more stable here? You might think the carbocation formed at the terminal carbon is more stable because of possible resonance structures. That would suggest that bromide ion should add to the terminal carbon atom. But surprisingly, that's not what happens. In this reaction, bromide ion adds to the central carbon atom. Why? Because the empty p orbital of the carbocation and the pi bonds are perpendicular to each other. Meaning there is no effective overlap and thus no resonance stabilization. Unlike what you'd see in an allele carbocation. So in this case, the more stable intermediate is actually the secondary carbocation formed at the central carbon, not the terminal one. In AD 74, Van't Hoff predicted the correct structure of alanes. However, due to their unique geometry, alanes were long considered to be highly unstable. The first known chemical compound containing an alanine structure was glutenic acid, synthesized in AD 87 by Burden and Pickman. They produce glutenic acid by reacting beta chlorogluconic acid with potassium hydroxide. Interestingly, they initially proposed an incorrect structure of glutenic acid, placing a triple bond in the middle of the molecule. It wasn't until 1954 that its structure was revised, revealing that glutenic acid actually contains an alanine moiety, not an alkyne. Compared to other pi bond containing building blocks like alkynes and alkenes, alanes exhibit distinct reactivity pattern. In addition to their unique arrangement of pi bonds, alanes have three potential reactive sites, which opens up valuable opportunities to enhance efficiency and build more complex molecular scaffolds. One of the main challenges in alanine chemistry is controlling radioselectivity. Here, the nature of the substituents plays a crucial role. In other words, radioselectivity can be fine-tuned by introducing electron withdrawing groups, electron donating groups, or even metal centers onto the alanine framework. Electron withdrawing groups pull electron density toward themselves, making the central carbon atom of the alanine more electrophilic than the terminal carbon atoms. This makes it an ideal target for nucleophilic attack, a strategy often used to construct heterocyclic rings. One notable example involves phosphine oxide, which acts as electron withdrawing group when attached to an alanine. 
To form a cyclic product, the nucleophile is typically already present in the starting material in a protected form, for instance, as cellular ever. Treatment with third butyl ammonia fluoride removes the protecting group, releasing the nucleophile oxygen, which then attacks the central carbon of the allene to form a substituted dihydrofuran ring. This is an excellent example of regioselectivity. Note that the nucleophile could also attack a terminal carbon to form a 6 membered ring, which is thermodynamically more stable than a 5 membered ring. However, the reaction preferentially formed a 5 membered ring, highlighting how substituents on the allene dictates the reactivity pattern. Another key aspect is the position of the double bond in the final product. After nucleophilic attack, the pi bond can shift to a different carbon atom. The resulting carbonion transition state is stabilized by electron withdrawing group. This alternative pathway might suggest a kinetic product, one formed faster due to a more stable transition state. But the major product benefits from conjugation with the phosphorus oxygen double bond. The carbon phosphorus bond can rotate to allow the orbitals of the phosphorus oxygen bond and the carbon carbon double bond in the ring to align in the same plane. This copolarity enables conjugation, which stabilizes the product. In other words, the reaction is thermodynamically controlled, favoring the more stable conjugated product. If you are interested in strategies for controlling regioselectivity, Check out the total synthesis of minfiancine. It's a great example to deepen your understanding of this concept. Donor substituted allenes exhibit a completely different reactivity pattern. These substituents push electron density toward the central carbon atom, making it more nucleophilic and capable of attacking electrophiles. At the same time, the terminal carbon can act as an electrophilic site and be attacked by nucleophiles. Among the various donor substituents, oxygen-substituted allenes are of major importance. A key feature of this compound is that the carbon-hydrogen bond adjacent to the oxygen exhibit relatively high acidity. This allows for smooth lithiation followed by reaction with a wide range of electrophiles. Another interesting feature of alkoxyalines is that this hydrogen atom is also acidic, making this building block extremely valuable for constructing complex and challenging targets. Let's look at the practical approach that utilizes alkoxyalines. In this case, lithiated methoxyaline undergoes an SN2 type reaction with an alkyl iodide. Treatment with third butyl lithium deprotonates this carbon atom generating a nucleophilic species that can trap carbon dioxide by attacking its carbon atom. In this sequence, oxygen atom attacks with its carbon atom to create a 5 membered ring. The resulting intermediate is a Michael acceptor. After deprotection with tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride, the nucleophilic oxygen attacks a double bond to produce oxypine skeleton. In this example, you can see how allenes can serve as free carbon building block to construct challenging targets like oxypine skeleton. By leveraging both the nucleophilic and electrophilic properties simultaneously within the same reaction. This versatile building block can also be used in even more complex transformations. From the perspective of a synthetic chemist, it's fascinating to explore what happens when allenes are combined with other building blocks, such as alkynes, alkenes, cyclopropenes, or cyclobutenes. These combinations open the door to constructing more complex architectures in an efficient way. I'm not going to dive into the details of these reactions here, but if you are curious how such combinations are applied in a real-world synthesis, the total synthesis of petrolite is a great example worth exploring. Now let's explore what happens when a linear allene is bent. How does bending this linear building block change its properties? To answer this fundamental question, we need to take a deep dive into orbital interactions. 
we can define a bending axis that passes through the central carbon atom. The allene bends relative to this axis. Actually, there are two primary types of deformation that influence the electronic nature of the molecule. The first one is bending at the central carbon atom. In this deformation, the allene group bends at the central carbon. This introduces S character into the p orbital of the central carbon that participates in one of the pi bonds, especially the one that lies perpendicular to the bonding axis. As a result, pi overlap is reduced, weakening that particular pi bond compared to the ideal linear allene structure, where maximum orbital overlap is achieved. In the second deformation, one of the terminal methylene groups twists resulting in a more planar allene-like structure. This transformation leads to a linear arrangement of p orbitals similar to the orbital setup in allelic systems. However, one of the p orbitals at the central carbon remains non-bonding. It's perpendicular to the new pi system. In linear allenes, four p orbitals interact to form two perpendicular pi bonds. But in a twisted form, only three p orbitals contribute to the formation of two planar pi bonds, leaving one orbital non-bonding. Allenes become bent when they are incorporated into rings. Computational studies show that the extent of distortion depends on the ring size. Rings with nine members or more can accommodate a linear allene without significant distortion. But as the ring size decreases, distortion is introduced. Importantly, bending and torsion are coupled motions. A combination of both define the unique properties of a cyclic allene. One major consequence of bending is the loss of degeneracy between the bonding and anti-bonding p orbitals. In undistorted linear allenes, like those in large rings, the bonding orbitals are degenerate. They have the same energy and are filled with four electrons. As the ring size decreases and the molecules become bent, this degeneracy is lost. The orbitals split into four distinct energy levels. Calculations reveal that planar allenes can exist in four different electronic configurations, depending on which orbitals are filled. The non-bonding orbital at the central carbon can exhibit carbonion character, carbocationic character or radical character, either in a singlet or triplet state. Notice that we cannot consider just one of them as a real structure. All four configurations contribute to the structure of cyclic allenes. This deep orbital discussion was like the bottom part of an iceberg which is usually underestimated in textbooks, but I believe that it's crucial to understand the behavior of allene building blocks. Now let's jump to the tip of the iceberg, which is a synthetic application of cyclic allenes. I've also created a video about cyclopropane. If you are interested in how orbitals affect the reactivity of cyclopropane, check out this video. The chemistry of strained organic compounds has always been fascinating for organic chemists. Although cyclic strained compounds such as benzene and cyclohexene are well studied, the chemistry of cyclic allenes has remained largely untapped. Especially the utilization of cyclic allenes containing a heteroatom, which is rare in the realm of organic synthesis. Professor Neil Garg's group focuses on the chemistry of strained compounds, particularly strained allenes. In one of their notable works, the group developed an effective approach for creating azacyclic allenes under mild reaction conditions. This highly reactive intermediate is generated in situ without isolation and is trapped as a dienophile in a Diels-Alle reaction. But which of the double bonds participates in this reaction? Actually, two possible products can form depending on the reduce-selectivity of the reaction. The synthesis of azacyclic allene begins with commercially available formatoxypyridine, which undergoes orthosylation to yield a silyl-substituted pyridine. First, the methoxy group directs lithiation and its alpha position after which a triethylsilyl group is installed at the free position of pyridine. 
Next, a one-pot procedure involving reductive carbamylation and hydrolysis provides a vinylic amide. Finally, L-selectri as a nucleophilic hydrogen source triggers a 1-4 addition to the conjugated ketone. After that, LEA abstracts a proton from the alpha position of the carbonyl group to produce an enolate, which is trapped by Cummins reagent to form the corresponding triflate. This compound is a precursor of cyclic aline. Treatment with cesium fluoride removes the cellular substituents and produces cyclic aline, which is trapped by an appropriate diene such as pyrrole. Different dienes such as furins can be used to increase the diversity of the products. The interesting thing about this reaction is that regioselectivity can be tuned by installing different substituents on the ring. It was found that when a methyl group is installed on the molecule, the double bond far from the methyl group incorporates into the reaction. In addition, diestereoselectivity significantly increases. On the other hand, in the presence of an ester group, another double bond of the aline reacts with the diene. Interestingly, in the presence of both the methyl and ester groups, this double bond reacts with the diene. Moreover, the yield of the reaction increases significantly. I think until now you understand the fundamentals of aline chemistry and how this building block behaves in chemical reactions. I've provided a link to this paper in the description, so check it out if you want to know more about this excellent work.